To recap for video, this is a graph of a velocity function, and we're making sign lines for both the velocity and the acceleration based on the graph. The critical numbers for the velocity, the values where velocity is either zero or undefined, would be 2, 4, 10, and 14. So those have to go on our sign line. 2, 4, 10, and 14. So the signs of velocity on the velocity sign line would literally be where is it above or below the x-axis. So from 1 to 2, the velocity is... Three. Oh, sorry. I thought we were doing acceleration critical numbers. Oh, the velocity ne positive. is positive. Positive. Negative. Two to four, it's negative. Positive. 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 Negative. Negative. Positive. Positive. Well, Davis's. If this was curve <laughs> sketching, underneath the sign line, we'd write little arrows going up and down, right? But it's not curve sketching. This is PVA. So the sign of the velocity instead determines. It sends its horizontal motion if the particle is moved to the right or the left. So this particle, if you want to write, you sure don't have to, but if you wanted to, it's moving to the right, left, right, left, right. Okay. All right. Acceleration. Three. Three. Seven. Seven. Twelve. And twelve. The critical numbers for the acceleration are the places where the velocity changes direction, right? They're the maxes and mins of velocity. So 3, 7, 12. From 1 to 3, the acceleration is negative. Negative. Why? Because it's decreasing. Well, because the velocity is decreasing, right? Good. And remember, yeah, acceleration is its slope. So if the slope is negative, it's negative. All right, from 3 to 7, the acceleration is? Positive. 7 to 12? Negative. 12 to 15? Positive. Positive. All right, and then we're not going to write anything under acceleration right now. Okay, so for letter B, letter B says, on what intervals is the velocity negative? Just answer it. So when is the velocity negative? 2 to 4 and 10 to 14. 2 to 4, 10 to 14. If you, it says justify. I mean, you really, there's not really justification for this. Saying that velocity is negative because it's less than zero is kind of silly, right? It's like saying, hey, it's negative because it's negative, right? So there's not really justification for this. But we'll put that down just to have something, right? Okay. So, letter C. On what intervals is the acceleration positive? 3 to 7 and 12 to 15. 3 to 7 and 12 to 15. Now this one would be more likely an AP exam question and this one you would have to put justification. Do not put because A of T is greater than zero. That's just saying acceleration is positive because it's positive. We want to say acceleration is positive. How did we know to put pluses there? Because, to, is, is greater than zero. because the velocity is Increase. increasing. Yeah, if you say dv dt, you're just saying acceleration again. You're just saying acceleration is positive because acceleration is positive. Okay. We want to say acceleration is positive because velocity is increasing. increasing. All right, letter D. <coughs> Speed from 3 to 4. On 3 to 4, the speed is increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. How do you know it's decreasing? Because velocity is less than zero. It's approaching zero. Good. And I'm just going to put because V of T and A of T have opposite signs, right? If you want to be specific and say what the signs are, that's okay, but you've got to make sure you're correct. So just saying that they have opposite signs is fine. What about on, what was, I don't see, part E. What was the other interval? 10 to 12. Uh, yeah. 10 to 12. On 10 to 12, how, what's the speed doing? Increasing. Speed is increasing. Why? Because velocity and acceleration have the same, oh, I didn't write sign. Have the same sign. 
have the same sign. Okay, any questions on that? Everyone feel all right? Good. I'm going to see if I can do something a little devious here. And uh -oh. I'm going to see if I can open up the same document on top of that one and scooch it up and keep the graph. You could just see. open it up and then delete it, but then just not save it. Oh, but it's in Adobe. Never mind. Yeah, it's in Adobe. That's the problem. Um, okay. I don't know. So, let's see. Are we looking for that? Oh, that would work. I see what you're saying. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait. Where'd the other Adobe go? Oh, it's, no, yeah, on, the it's on the internet. Okay, so. Alright, that'll kind of work. Just yes. Yeah, oh, there someone's in their swords. Uh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, for F, this is, this is the tricky one. Uh, there's an easy, easy way to find these answers, and then there is a slightly harder way, but the slightly harder way shows like real math justification. Okay? So that. I'm going to walk you through, well, this says you have to use definite integrals, so we have to do it that way. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through the quick way just so you have an understanding of what's going on. The area under the velocity curve tells you how far something has traveled in that interval. Guys, remember the derivative of position is velocity. So the, the antiderivative of velocity is position, right? Mm -hmm. If we have position over an interval, we're talking about distance traveled. All right, so here, if this position, and they told us the opening position. They said x of 1 was, what was it, 3? Uh, yeah. x of 1 was 3? <laughs> they did. Yeah, it says it oh, right yeah. there. OK. So the beginning position, x of 1 is 3. So here's what's happening. This particle starts at position 3, moves 1 to the right, so at time 2, it's at 4. Then it moves 2 to the left, so then at time 4, it's back at 2. Then it moves 14 to the right, so now it's at 16. Then it moves 6 to the left, so now it's at position 10. Then it moves 3 to the right, so it ends at 13. So it tells you the area under the velocity curve tells you how far the particle has traveled in that interval. And if it's above the x-axis, it would be to the right. And below the x-axis, it would be to the left. So we're going right 1, left 2, right 14, left 6, right 3. So if you wanted the positions at 2, 4, 10, and 14, you could just nail and throw them out there in two seconds by looking at the graph, right? You have your starting position, and you just add, you subtract, you add, you subtract, you add, and you're done. However, on a free response exam, and I've seen this on the AP exam, and they do say they want you to justify with definite integrals, here's how you have to do it. So to find the position at t equals 2, we set up the integral from 1 to 2 of the velocity function. When you want an antiderivative at one point, you set up a definite integral. Your limits are whatever, wherever you know it, like we know x of 1, and then wherever you want it, like we want x of 2. Okay. So whatever you're given and whatever, you try, or you're, whatever you're trying to find, those are your limits. You always put the derivative of you, what you want in here. Don't put the actual function, just put the name. All right? Even if you knew what this function was, I still don't want you to write the function itself. I want you to write v. The reason I want you to write v of t is because what is the antiderivative of v of t? x of t. So this integral equals x of 2 minus x of 1. But what is the value of the integral from 1 to 2 of the velocity function? It's 1, because it's the same as the area under the curve, right? So this integral right here is 1. So what this says is 1 equals x of 2 minus, hey, what's x of 1? 
3. 3. Hey, look at this. x of 2 equals 4. But aren't x of 2 and x of 1 on that? Isn't that just position, though? Yeah, but that's what it asks for. So, yeah, so, so we can equate the position to your area? We're not equate. Um, it's just the area. This is the, the yes. The area under remember the area under the velocity curve tells you how far you've traveled. It doesn't tell you the position. It tells you how far you've traveled. But if we know the beginning position and then we know how far we've traveled, we can calculate the ending position. Does that make sense? And overall, we've traveled just one. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Does that that help? Wait. Why is there three for the x of one? Because it was given at the beginning of the problem that x of 1 was 3. I'll show you. It says it right there. Yeah. Good. Any other questions about this? All right. So now, if we were going to do this, not enough space to do all four of these. They take a lot of space. Um, if we were going to do find uh, x of 4. So say now we move on, we find x of 4. So we'd have to set up the integral from 2 to 4 of the velocity. Because we know v, if we know x of 2, we want x of 4. You could go 1 to 4, <coughs> but it'd actually be a little easier to go 2 to 4. OK, so from 2 to 4 of v of t. I'm going to skip writing this, and I'm just going to jump and say, hey, just for space sake, this is x of 4 minus x of 2. So it's the antiderivative at the top limit minus the antiderivative evaluated at the bottom. All right, what is the integral from 2 to 4 of v of t? Two. It's close. It's negative, negative, two. negative 2. Why is it negative 2? Because it's below the x. Because it's below the x-axis, right? So the area is 2, but the integral is negative 2. All right, this equals x of 4 minus, hey, what's x of 2? It's 4, you just found it. So x of 4 equals 2. Everyone, I want you to take a minute. I know this is squishy. You can write it down below off to the side somewhere. And I want you to find x of 10 and x of 14 using that method.